Say whatever you want about the Los Angeles Lakers, but what you can't say is that this team is not way more talented than it was last season. You can argue about the fit, you can argue about the pieces, you can argue about the direction of the roster, the age of the roster. There are a lot of questions you can ask about this Los Angeles Lakers basketball team, but one question you will not ask is how talented is this team because we all know the answer. I mean, just check out this graphic. Is this graphic surreal for anybody else? The Athletic asked the great question and I wanted to present it to you guys. How many games do you think that this team would win in the 2013 to 2014 NBA season? On top of that, I want to know your biggest concern for this Los Angeles Lakers team. Lakers training camp has been going very well. It's been going so well that it has kind of changed my outlook on this squad just a little bit. Now, before we go more in depth on the Los Angeles Lakers, if you are new to my channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you turn on notifications, you will be entered into an NBA 2K22 giveaway. If you already have NBA 2K22, then you can enter a VC giveaway by following my stream the link to my stream will be down in the description below and in the pinned comments i've been loving nba 2k22 so much that i made this crazy kevin durant build and i want you guys to see this build in action speaking of kevin durant if you guys want a nets video tomorrow let me know down in the comments below we're going to get into the hot topics and the juicy stuff very shortly, but first I wanna talk about this picture that has been making rounds on Lakers Twitter. This picture is just perfect. It doesn't tell me anything new, but it reaffirms what I already knew. I think this Lakers team is going to have fantastic chemistry. You have guys on this team that are playing for each other. It's a completely different experience when you have guys playing for each other as opposed to where you have guys just trying to get their own and hooping like it's open gym. One of the hottest topics surrounding the Los Angeles Lakers has been Russell Westbrook and what is his shot going to look like in a Los Angeles Lakers uniform. We already know Russell Westbrook is one of the most dynamic playmakers in the league. He gets downhill with the best of them. He's an absolute blur in transition and can find the open guy at the blink of an eye. You guys really didn't need me to tell you guys this, but LeBron James is absolutely going to love that. For one, last season, the Lakers lacked playmakers. They went out and got one of the best playmakers in the league. But for two, the Los Angeles Lakers in 2021 want to make an emphasis on getting out in transition. To quote LeBron James, we definitely want to get back to being the number one fast break team. I think that's one of the best things we could do this year. Our ability to get out and run. Obviously, Russ is always top five in pace in our league. So being able to use that and extend and use that to our advantage is going to be beneficial to our overall offense. Last season, the Los Angeles Lakers were 11th in fast break points, averaging 13.2 fast break points per game. They were right behind Brooklyn, who averaged 13.5. And you guys could maybe guess who was number one? Maybe not. The Memphis Grizzlies averaged the most fast break points per game, averaging 17.1. Surprisingly, Westbrook's old team, the Washington Wizards, only averaged 11.5, good enough to make them the 20th best fast break team in the league. I watched a lot of Washington Wizards games last season. It felt like this team moved as Russell Westbrook did. That's exactly the type of impact that Russell Westbrook has on the basketball floor. Now, if you guys watched my most recent Lakers video, we talked about LeBron James slimming down and looking more explosive. If Bron says he wants the Lakers to get out in transition this season and get buckets, then I believe him. Now, of course, nobody's going to be questioning the Lakers' ability to get downhill or get to the basket anymore, or at least I think they won't. The biggest question is going to be, can the Lakers shoot the ball? And more importantly, can Russell Westbrook become a knockdown shooter or a good enough shooter to keep defenses honest? The good news is, is that Russell Westbrook has a new jump shot. 
It's not completely different from his old jump shot, but there are enough mechanical fixes that really make you buy in and love the product that you see. Do you guys expect to see Russell Westbrook take a leap shooting the ball this season? Skip Bayless does not think so. He is an abysmal high volume three point shooter. Yeah. And as the old saying goes, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Russell is third worst over that 13 year span. Third worst. Now this is going to be a very unpopular opinion and I'm ready to defend it. I don't think Russell Westbrook is actually bad at shooting the basketball. I think at times he takes a lot of bad shots, but do I think he's bad at shooting? No. If you look at his free throw percentage throughout his career for a majority of it, he shot free throws in the 80% range. There's not too many horrific shooters shooting free throws at 80%. Now, of course, free throws aren't always a direct correlation to how well somebody shoots the ball, so I have more stats to dive deeper. Now, last season, if you just look at what Russell Westbrook shot from the three-point line, you'd assume he was a bad shooter. 31.5% from the three-point line is not good. I want to emphasize this so I'll state it again. I said bad shots. Russell Westbrook takes a lot of tough shots. If you look at these splits from NBA.com, they tell you a story that a lot of people aren't willing to write. On the left side of the screen, we see shot clock range. When Russell Westbrook takes very early threes, very early jump shots, He's shooting around 23% when he shoots threes six seconds into the shot clock. A lot of times he also takes late shot clock jumpers because somebody has to take them and why not have it be one of your best players. Those numbers aren't great also. 19% seven to four seconds. With zero to four seconds remaining, he shoots 30%. 15 to 22 seconds, he shoots around 36%, which is around league average and not bad at all. Now let's also go down and check out his wide open three point percentage. When he has six plus feet of space, he shoots 35.3% from the three point line. That's barely below league average, if it's below league average at all. So I actually just looked it up and 36.7% was the league average three point percentage for last season. The reason that I think these percentages are so important is because now Russell Westbrook will be playing with one of the best playmakers to ever play the game of basketball and LeBron James. This season, the Lakers should generate a lot of wide open jump shots. The issue is going to be knocking them down, which I think they have the potential to do. Now to get back to the training camp talk to quote LeBron James, the energy alone just last year after coming off the bubble, it literally took everything away from you. Any little bit of energy you had, it was completely gone when we left there. So to come back into the season with the quick start that we had, kind of the life of the party was a little bit just like kind of stale, rightfully so. Guys just didn't have an opportunity for a mental break. So you could definitely feel the energy shift a lot more this season in the first two practices compared to the last. Vogel has made it known that he wants the Lakers to bring energy to training camp. He's also made it known that the final two spots in the Los Angeles Lakers starting lineup are up for grabs. Vogel says three starters were obvious in practice, LeBron, AD, Russ, but the other two players rotated frequently. So no hints on who'll start alongside the big three. So there's a little controversy surrounding the starting lineup. Kyle Goon tweeted September 30th that the Lakers got a lot of reps with DeAndre Jordan at center next to AD at the four and Kendrick Nunn at the two guard. Vogel said he will give minutes to two players who give the best combination of shooting and perimeter defense. Probably the toughest battle. Now I've been seeing a lot of reports about Anthony Davis playing five. I know Westbrook and Ron are excited about that possibility and what he can do at the five position. This is the starting lineup that The Athletic projected and I wanna know your thoughts on this lineup because I think that there are better lineups to be made, but I'm not sure. It's also worth noting that Vogel expects Melo to have a major role, be it 
on the court starting or off the bench regardless of where he plays his role will be pretty big i'm really excited to see what the los angeles lakers can do this season let me know what you guys think about everything if you are new to my channel be sure to subscribe turn on notifications drop your starting lineup in the comments below clicking the video on the screen right now is a great way to support my channel i'm get like coop bringing you guys the scoop until our next upload